Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Another fun edition of Deborah Kubelt Live. I hope everybody had a really nice Thanksgiving. Tony, how was your Thanksgiving? It was wonderful. Thank yeah, you did you stay much. in town? I did. I had a great uh, tummy fillers. Yeah, too mm -hmm. much tummy fillers. It's yeah. like, oh, no, I'm going to be good this year. You know, I've got to lay off the pumpkin pie and just be a little good. But <laughs> we had a great time. I got to see some family I haven't seen in a while. It was really, really nice. And uh, while we were with family we haven't seen in a while, we were talking about my parents and everyone who watches the show knows that they've passed in recent years. And we have two very interesting people on today who claim to be able to sort of, you know, be able to contact those who have passed. And they're pretty well known. We've got Craig and Jane Hamilton Parker calling from England. Thanks for being here. Hey, how are you? Can you hear me? Hello? Can they hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, we can hear you now. Oh, okay, great. Hi. Oh, did you hear the big studio audience, the people clapping Disappear. for you? <laughs> Into the spirit world. <laughs> oh, we've got a huge audience for you here today. So anyway, thank you for joining us. It's, uh, what, 9 o'clock at night for you over in Winchester, England. So um, kind of joining us with your hot chocolate and jammies. So um, you are psychic mediums and spiritual leaders. What does that mean? Well, a psychic medium, our, our objective is to prove um, that the human personality survives death. That is, that we live in another world after we've died. And we do that by giving proof, evidence of survival of uh, through spirit communication. So how do you do that? How do you spiritually contact people who have who've passed? I don't quite get how this works. I've never done this before. And I'm right, intrigued. Well, it works different. It works differently for all types of mediums. There's lots of different mediums. You've got lots of them in America, just as we have them over here <coughs> in England. But um, in our the way we work is through what we call um, mental mediumship. It's kind of inner communication. It's like a form of telepathy. I mean, just like you have telepathy between people, or we believe you have telepathy between people, you might pick up how a person feels, you might pick up a sentence from someone or something like that. We actually have the telepathy with the people in the spirit world. So we get impressions in our mind, and then we express those expressions to somebody that um, might be sat with us and give some evidence on proof of life after death through that. We also hear them clairaudiently, and also what we call our solar plexus here, we can sense the spirit. If somebody's set in front of us, we actually can see things, hear things, and sense. So for most mediums, it works in lots of different ways, yeah. you see. I mean, uh, like Jane and myself, we're, we're what you call clairaudient. That's we'll hear words. So in our thoughts, we might hear a name, we might hear an address, we might hear a number. And when we say those things, then it, fit, it, it connects with the person that sat with us. Sometimes you feel it, you sense it, you might sense how the person died, you might sense their illnesses and things, their personality, the um, incidents that happened in their life. It's almost like remembering something it's like you remember it as if it's your own memory but it applies to the person that's in the spirit that they're given information to the person that you're sat with and most you... important you must have compassion in your heart because a lot of people have suffered in this life so you tend to give it with love really what do you say to people who say hogwash nobody can do that you know they pass into another form what do you say well, to I, critics? I should listen to those people. I listen to people, real people, that we deal with. And you can only go by your personal experience. I mean, it's fair enough that some people are focused on the objective world and they say that is all that exists. All that exists is what's outside of ourselves. Consciousness, awareness is developed by the brain. But, you know, we make we look at it a different way. I think that's a mistake to think that everything is outside of ourselves. We are actually beings, even at this present moment when we're talking to you. Everything that we're doing now is inside our brain. It's a picture. It's all consciousness. You know, the external world's an illusion in that respect. So, I mean, I believe that there are different levels of consciousness that we can become aware of. And after death, we may go into some other form of reality that is completely different to the reality that the skeptics say is the only one. Give me some Give me concrete examples of what you've done and people you've worked with and how you've tapped into the other side. And one more thing. Are you able to, I know you don't like to work with people over the phone, but could you work with people over Skype? We could do a little something ourselves in a little bit. 
Well, you need to really tune in and meditate for at least half an hour before you do. Yeah, we're not really geared up for that at the moment. That would need to be a separate sort of session, really, because we need to be in the right frame of mind and get tuned in and prepared. So we're kind of in interview frame of mind at the moment rather than the susceptibility and openness to the spirit that we need to be in to make a proper spirit communication over the line. All right. Fair enough. Everyone needs to be prepared. Right. Okay, I'll give you that. So tell me some of the work that you've done with people and the impact you've had, because I do know that your reputation is of a good one. Um, so have at it. Okay, well, what's what? Um, some of the most important things well, we've done? Well, with Eric Robinson. Eric Roberts, he's a good person. Yeah. He, uh, that was a celebrity, of course. He's the brother of um, Julia, Julia Roberts. Roberts. I mean, he when we were in America, he um, volunteered to have a reading with us, um, which we filmed. And... Um, he, he was very open to it and felt he, he he said it was we were the real thing the real deal he he said we he felt we were we made a communication with his father he'd had some difficulties in his life with his father his and we gave and his half sister and spirit and gave him a lot of proof and evidence that he he felt was very um very real i mean he he gave an extremely good testimonial to camera but the most important ones are not really in. dealing with um, you know celebrities. I mean, that's probably interesting to listen to. But it's the ordinary people where the real help comes through, where, you know, it's people that have lost children, people where there's been a suicide, when there's been a sudden unanswered questions that the person has to... Um, and animals. Uh, animals, Which yeah. I mean, th- another one, the one that's uh, interesting. I mean, we did, we did some work with Diana. I can tell you about that in a minute. But... Um, Another interesting one was Jane communicated one of the Chinese leaders. Um, uh, we had uh, the, the some relations of Sun Yat-sen, who was the like the grandfather of China in some respects. He was pre-Mao. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jane actually found the missing fortune. 20, um, $27 million. We found $27 million for the, for the, for the family. Wait, which stop. Through we you found some missing money. I got. I got to talk to you because um, that, <laughs> we didn't get a cut. How'd you pull that off? We're listening. We're listening. <laughs> Wait. What are I mean, you? What, how did you do tough, this? You know, Let's circle back for a second about that missing money. Um, how did this happen? Well, his um, great grandfather, Charles' great grandfather, died, and he was passing the information. They had some scrupulous uncles that were after all the money. And the money was hidden, and the spirit world showed me exactly where it was hidden in Bermuda. And uh, okay, that's what wild. Happened, they never thought to look there. You no, know, <coughs> the lawyers in New York had sent it, the box to the wrong person, which landed on Charles' lap exactly. It was a big court case, and that's where they found the money. And um, and then his mother still communicates with me. She lives on the Earth plane. She lives in Hawaii, actually, yeah, because yeah. Um, Sun Yat-sen spent most of his time in Hawaii when he was in exile from China. And the money, the $27 million, is going to a kind of a charitable cause because the mother is now having statues of her grandfather built around the world so that the message of his teachings, which is like a democracy for China, really. This is was a, he, he was a very interesting man that... Um, uh, came to America and learned from American democracy and wanted to apply that to China. And of course, what happened in China, politics took over the Maoist revolution and all the rest of it, um, pushed his teachings to the side. And um, uh, she's spending the money on basically helping to promote that cause. So well, that was something where the spirit was well, sort of outstanding. Major. Now, I know you did some work trying to channel Diana, Princess of Wales. Um, I know it was not well received, and they wouldn't they wouldn't even allow it to be shown right over in in England, oh, correct? And it it was shown in the end, but um, it was that they didn't like to show it because it was a bit oversensitive, I think, at the time. Yeah, of course. Uh, so you know, what, I mean, what came of the, that? The, what came of that? Well, from our point of view, what we wanted to do, and what, I mean, we were asked to do it. It wasn't our idea. We were asked, could could we do that? And well, we thought, let's yeah. be true. What happened? A Hollywood producer asked if we'd link for the spirit of Diana. So I said to him, just because you're rich and famous, it doesn't mean we dance to your tune. I'll have to ask my grandmother. He said, could you possibly ask your grandmother this weekend? I said, it's not as easy as that because she's in the spirit world. Anyway, I tuned in and she said it would be okay. Uh, Then we had a meeting and then they arranged for us to uh, meet these people that we've never met before. 
One was the Royal Correspondent. Well, uh, the first thing we said, we can't just pull Diana out the air. You know, we can't say I'm in touch with Alvis or I'm in touch with this or that. that. We have to have people that can qualify what we say. So if we're given some proof, they've got got to be able to give validation of that. So it needs to be people that are not just people that are fans of Diana. They have to be people that really knew her intimately, had to be close confidants of some sort so that we could... um, the things we said could be qualified and prove first and foremost that we we're in touch with Diana. And that was one hell of a big thing to have to try to do on television, actually, because, you know, it's stressful and, enough. And, doing yeah, medium there's shows. no doubt. So, yeah. and, and again, you're saying you were able to do that. And what is it that she told you? What did well, you find she, out? Well, the, we t- we gave a lot of evidence. I mean, uh, I remember telling li- little things often clinch it for people because you have to give something that's not in the press, not that could be looked up on the Internet, not personal. something that's very personal. So, I mean, for one of the girls, the, the clinch for her was from one of my ones was that um, she always bought sweets for Diana, kept them in her pocket and would always give her um, pear drops every time that Diana visited. And she said, how did you know I kept the pear drops? So that was something tiny but intimate and important that qu- that nobody else could have known about and once we and jane got you yeah. had some um, what mine was there was a lady sat around the seance room and uh, diana said you nearly came and joined me this christmas uh because you got bitten by a snake and she said jane that's true because i have aids yeah uh, so there's lots of stuff yeah. like that i mean the the, the, the program went on for nearly two hours i think altogether or longer um so there's lots of information that we were able to give that was taken by the sisters that were with us and confirmed as being correct. The message Diana gave, though, <coughs> was, from our point of view, perhaps the worst possible message of all, because most people feel that there was a conspiracy to kill Diana and something was going on. There was lots of um, hidden things. But the, the information we got, which people didn't want to hear, which people find hard to accept, is that actually it was simply an accident. The car crashed in the Alma tunnel and there was no conspiracy to blow out the tires or fix the engine or drug the driver and fix the ambulance. If it was a conspiracy, it would have been too difficult to pull off. I mean, how do you even plan that? Okay, once you hit this pillar, you're going to twist around. And then the tire, I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. I think the whole conspiracy idea anyway was sort of blown out of the, by the press just to but keep I tell you, going. People hate it when you tell them it's no conspiracy. Pardon? They want to believe. <laughs> people want to think it's a conspiracy. So yeah. um, I don't know. Did she have anything to say about her children or any any message she wanted to pass through to you uh, about yes, her well, that children? Was the main, that was the main um, reason I feel that Diana connected with us and actually because she might not have connected at all, you know, um, <coughs> but she wanted to get the message out that the um, her love for the children, basically. Um, and that, you know, she, her, they wanted to give proof that, you know, she had survived death, as it were, that she did continue in the spirit world. And her message was one of love to her children. And, you know, it's proving really in many ways now that her love to her children was so strong that it's actually developed so, a, a children that have very good values and very good yeah, qualities wonderful that are going to, I think, hopefully uh, shake up the uh, dem- the. Uh, uh, monarchy here in in ways that have never been done before. It's nice to see a bit of um, black blood in the family, which is going to happen with the marriage with uh, with with Harry. That was very exciting, actually. They're they're mm-hmm. they're sort of becoming a more America. modern monarchy. So, um, yeah. and I think the people over well, there, I mean, yeah. you would know better. You live there, are excited about all that. So, I'm, it's, yeah, that's actually marvelous, terrific. Yeah, and what can the royal family do, really? Because if we go back in time, um, Wallace Simpson, who was an American, there was a big hoo ha that uh, is a divorce. He shouldn't marry. So karmically, it's like it's all come back full circle, isn't it? In Greg? a way, yeah. And also, strangely enough, when we did the Diana seances, the uh, the driver, by sheer coincidence, had been the driver for Wallace Simpson uh, that took us to the events in Paris, you know. So um, the, the, uh, the, I think with the royal family, I think there's a certain sort of synchronicity of destiny that seems to come there. You know, I, I think in people's lives, um, coincidences happen. And I think what we're seeing in the royal family now is really things turning around. It's going to be the opposite to what it was in the past with a sort of royal ruling elite, as it were. When people pass on, are they sort of floating around us? You know, are people that have passed on in my life, are they sort of around right now? 
<laughs> I mean, not well, that you can channel that because, again, you said you need to do some prep. But for all of us, are they around well, or do they go somewhere else and come back? Well, I mean, in your opinion, well, they, what happens? They wouldn't be around you 24-7 because we believe that the spirit world only contact people when the time is right, when they're meant to. I mean, they're not watching you, for example, taking a bath. Or, um, oh, thank goodness. You know, it, Do you know, can I just yeah. say, as a little kid, I used to be scared of Santa th watching me taking a bath. So when yeah, I even exactly. the thought of that, yeah. I mean, I hope that they at least have some decency. <laughs> yeah, he scares the life well, out of it's me. true. I hope they have some decency, <laughs> these spirits. And if Weird you're taking man. a bath, they'll go away and come back later. So yeah. having said that, I, I um, wrote so book they don't about come actually, when you're in the bathtub. Different... That's a good thing. But generally, uh, in all sorry, seriousness, <laughs> no, seriously, do they? Where do they go when they take you know leave for a while? Where are they floating around? I mean, I really am not that connected in this way. Although well, I am not one to disbelieve, just so you know, but I'm okay. not super connected. So I'd like to know where do they go when they leave for a couple of days. Well, when, it's, the thing is, you've got to look at it in a different way because they're not like ghosts that float around this world. That's a complete misconception. Uh, you need to think of the spirit world as another form of dimension, really. Because That's true. The scientifically, it's true, actually, right? Um, scientifically, it's not been proven there's an afterlife yet. You know, I mean, the, the, the evidence, no, if you take the evidence as a whole, as it were, if you took all the evidence for near-death experiences, dreams, mediumship, um, uh, there, there's so much weight of evidence if taken as a whole. I think if you took it in a court of law, you would say there's enough evidence to suggest that there's life after death. But the, the, the way it works in the spirit world is it's not people experience the spirit world differently. Some people will experience it as a world very similar to the world we live in now, because that's where their consciousness is. And some people may experience a more abstract state, closer to a sort of lucid dream state. So it's almost impossible to explain, because even time in the spirit world is different. It's almost like a quantum world there. It's a completely different form of framework to what we're used to in this sort of objective reality that we live in now. But what I, what I meant before when I said scientifically, if you will, you know, matter, energy, it doesn't really go away. It just changes form, changes shape. And sort of the same thing with when one passes from this world. They don't really die. They just sort of leave the body behind, correct? Yeah, you're right. Your physical body, you have no need for it. So think of it this way, Deborah. When you're born, the crown chakra, um, you know, when you're born, it's open and it closes the baby's crown closes when you die that opens again and that spirit goes through that crown chakra and then you you have a loved one that meets you or a friend that meets you and so you can sometimes you know you have this light this energy that comes into the room uh, a great sense of warmth and love to take that soul over would you agree well yes and but also i'd also raise the question of what is consciousness what is awareness because th there's a sense that perhaps you know i have more awareness than an ant right so th there's kind of a quantity to awareness there's something that su has substance of some sort i also have a sense of self and well an i-ness as well which seems to be independent of the body because if we have for example if you experience things like traveling outside of the body if you have an ex if, if telepathy can exist it means that thoughts can exist outside the body and that consciousness can exist independent of the body. And perhaps evolution and all the rest of it is here just to help our consciousness evolve and move into other planes of existence after this one. So, you know, that's where I think science needs to start looking almost in the same way they look at too. quantum I energy. Too. I do, too. I do, too. I agree with you. I do think that science needs to look into that. I mean, to, to sort of stay within the box, if you will, is almost a little bit ignorant. It's like believing the world is flat. You know, um, there's more. There's more to this. And I think you're right. You know, scientists have to get on this and, and move forward with what's beyond all this. Um, yeah. And religion, too, actually, on the other extreme. That, actually, that was I mean, my next question. If we question. Learn to lose ourselves in beliefs, well, then we're stuck there because that's, that, that's fossilizing as well. You've got to look at it both ways. We've got to see ourselves as spiritual and religion are two different things in my mind and i think what we've got to do all of us is develop that spirituality within us those qualities that make us human and make us unique kindness love compassion all those things and that's what the higher levels of this evolution of our consciousness i think is all about good values values generally let yeah. me ask you because we only have a few minutes religious religion okay catholicism judaism muslim um and and there are others of course 
Um, how does this work within the framework of modern day religion? Well, I think it's universal to all in some respects. It's all rejected by all at the same time all in some one. respects. But, you know, if you think about it, um, there's only one God. We all believe in the same God. We all believe that that God is love. All the religions believe that God, that God is love, that that God is everywhere. You know, when you start looking at the similarities, you find that all the religions at heart, all of them have the same basic messages. And the continuation of the spirit is often part of that message. The idea that this concentrated consciousness, I might call it, is also perhaps the soul. And that may continue after after life, you know. I mean, so then, even these things that I do with mediumship, they don't prove God. They just prove the continuation of life. You know, I think God becomes the idea of God becomes a very personal thing, depending on what you understand that word to mean. So then where do we go when we die? We go. <coughs> I think we it's as if we shed the just like we shed the body, we shed the objective world. So we actually go into a state of existence that is hard to describe because it's a different type of dimension. So but for most people, they create a reality that's what they need. They create a reality that's similar to this world, but it might be flexible. You might be able to travel from one place to another very, very fast. If you want to be with someone, you'll be there at them in, in an instant with a th just by a thought. It's the closest I could describe it. Is like a dream, but a very awake, super lucid, super real dream that's more real than this world. Any predictions? Can you give us, let's say, three predictions for 2018? And I'm going to hold you oh. to it. I'm going to have you back at the end of the year, and we're going to see what happens. <laughs> okay. Well, we've made a few predictions before. Um, I, I feel that there's going to be a lot of eruptions this year. Um, I, I think we're going to possibly see Mount Vesuvius erupt in Italy. Um, Jeez, I I'm think on my way there to... now. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Really? Okay. When should I not go? <laughs> no. But... Yeah, you're going. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm going to call you first. Year, like, but... No, no, no. Okay. So I Mount predicted Vesuvius. an earthquake in Ishnia last year in Italy, and my, our, our, our children went there for a holiday, and it happened. You know? <laughs> um, also, I feel that North Korea. I feel that he'll be deposed there. That his own people will pull down Kim Jong Il, isn't oh. it? Or, or, you know, that would be um, the way to go. And we will get out of that crisis. That would be the way to go. I certainly hope that that's the way it it yeah. pans out. People, but so you think own, his own is, people yeah. will bring him down? And how about yeah, a, one or two more? And I think Trump's going to become more popular. I know there's an awful lot of bad feeling towards him, but I feel Trump, despite the things he says and his his attitude, I think um, he will gradually become more popular because people will feel that he's a man that gets things done. He's a businessman. Interesting. So he's, Trump's going to be more popular. <laughs> <He's a businessman. laughs> Trump more popular. The guy over in, uh, the guy over in North Hillary Korea Clinton. is going to be deposed by his own people. I like those two. Uh, Mount I think, Vesuvius, I, I don't Clinton's know. hope not. But, uh, all right, give me one or two more before I let you go. Hillary Clinton is going to um, is going to get very interested in religion. I feel and start taking a uh, you'll start seeing on the media a lot more about her talking about religion, maybe even kind of preaching in a way. And your book's going to do very well too, Deborah. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> your book's going to do very well, my dear. How do you say that? You because I am working on one, and I yeah, haven't really talked your about book's that. Going so to do that's very good. very well. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Your book is going to do very well. Well, now I'm really going to hold you to that because I, I haven't told too many people that I'm working on one. So that's very, very interesting that you said that. Uh, thank you. And I'm going to hold that to heart because, um, wow, you really took me by surprise right there. Um, how can people get in touch with you if they want to? Uh, um... Well, you can do a search on, on Google and find us under the name of Hamilton Park. You'll find our website, which is psychics.co.uk not com co uk and we've got a good youtube channel i think people would they look for us on youtube we've got loads of stuff with us and actually doing the, the you know the demonstration very important. and also uh, most of our work goes to a foundation uh, we give the money we earn from the work we do and our public work goes to help people in india we've bought people cows we've helped disabled children there we've helped orphans and we're trying to set a standard or mediumship and things like that. So we ask other psychics and mediums to go and look at that because and you know we're trying to set better values. In what, the Hamilton what, what Parker does. Foundation, right? You're building that's a spiritual right. center, and uh, you help the poor and destitute in India. I actually think that's terrific. So um, 
putting your money where your thoughts are. So that's actually And you'll be great. able to see some clips of our new television program we're trying to make too, which was out with distributors at the moment looking for a home um, about Mystic Journey to India, where we went to India and talked to the astrologists, talked to the holy men there, and then did a lot of charitable work there. And you'll see, you can see some clips of the work we've done um, helping the poor in India on through our YouTube and website. Absolutely wonderful. Fascinating to talk to you both. I think you're, you also have a very calming spirit yourself. So you sort of, um, you I enjoy. Good side. <laughs> what was that? You've seen the good side of us. He's smart. <laughs> Always. Anyway, Craig and Jane Hamilton Parker, thank you so much for calling us from, from England tonight where you are. I really appreciate it. And we'll stay in touch, okay? Thanks so much. And thanks, everybody, for being here for another fun edition of uh, Deborah Cobelt Live. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.